Did you know that there is a company growing a herb that is more valuable than gold? This is Veles Farming, a Slovakian startup and a pioneer in indoor saffron cultivation. And in this video, we will dive into the fascinating world of the red gold and see why it might just be the next billion dollar business for indoor farming startups. All right, so saffron, often referred to as the red gold, is a spice derived from the Crocus sativus flower, and it is the most expensive spice in the world. Depending on the quality, the price for saffron can vary from anywhere between 10 euros up to 50 euros per gram. All right, so why? Why is it so damn expensive? Well, that's because each Crocus sativus flower yields only a few saffron threads or stigma, as they are also known, making saffron incredibly labor-intensive to harvest and to process. In addition, saffron is pretty darn difficult to grow, and it requires quite specific conditions to flower with good quality. So I recently got to interview the head of operations at Veles, Viktor Kulchar, for our video podcast. By the way, subscribe if you want to see the full interview. And he explained some of the difficulties with saffron cultivation. But with saffron, I think the main thing you have to be careful is the if you have the right bulb and then providing the bulb uh, the precise conditions in the cycle. So there is a mm. definition in like when they co come out of dormancy, between dormancy and flowering, in flowering and in propagation. So you need to understand mm. how to change this correctly. And also mm -hmm. uh, with saffron, you have to understand the process. So saffron here in Northern Hemisphere flowers in, in wintertime. Mm -hmm. So you are working with cold. So you have to mm. understand how to introduce the cold for saffron in a way to make it flower. And uh, mm. uh, basically we call it the cold choke. So you cold choke the saffron with very low temperature for some time. And that uh, triggers the flowering. And then basically also during the, the flowering, you adjust the temperatures based on how you want the flowering to be triggered. So, so mm. we call it like peaks, but then basically after a peak, you again lower to trigger basically the, the lowering of the temperature boosts or the, the, the nutrient uptake into the, into mm. the sprout which produces the flowers. So then you get more mm. flowers in, in a way as well. So, so understanding because saffron is very uh, heavy on, on condition. So if you don't provide mm. it, conditions your results are going to be bad so as we can see the difficult cultivation process combined with saffron's unique flavor and medicinal properties has made saffron into the most valuable spice in the world sometimes even surpassing the price of gold by weight saffron itself has a long and interesting history it is believed to have its origins in Bronze Age Greece and it's been used for thousands of years by different cultures in different applications like cooking, medicine and even as a dye for coloring. For example, according to National Geographic, saffron was used by medieval monks who mixed the red stigma uh, with egg white to create a yellowish glue that functioned as a replacement for gold in the monks manuscripts. And you know, of course, Cleopatra, mm -hmm. because who else was said to bathe in saffron infused mare's milk before seeing a suitor. That must be in one oh. hell of a date for Julius Caesar. Anyways, saffron's unique flavor is a staple in dishes like paella, risotto and Persian rice. And it also boasts numerous medicinal properties such as antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits. This makes it highly sought after both in the culinary and health industries. In fact, saffron has historically been used in traditional medicine for treating a variety of ailments, including depression to hemorrhoids to menstrual discomfort. Also, at least according to sources, saffron was even prescribed as an antidote for the bubonic plague. Not saying that it wouldn't work, but okay. So in addition to its properties, one of the reasons driving up saffron's high price is that it has traditionally been grown only in a small number of locations around the world. In fact, most of the world's saffron has traditionally been grown inside a geographical belt that spans from Spain in the west to India in the east. As of today, Iran leads the world with a whopping 85% of global saffron production, while countries like Afghanistan, Greece, Morocco and India among other countries, share the rest of the pie. Iran's dominance in the market is often attributed to its relatively dry, sunny climate and the agricultural know-how that has been passed down through generations of farmers. Having said this, the recent developments in indoor farming technologies have already started changing the saffron markets, making its production more accessible than ever before. For example, our team here in the Arctic nation of Finland has been growing saffron in super small scale using our Herbie indoor farming research platforms. 
Of course, with this kind of a unit, we're not growing at an industrial scale. So, you know, the volumes are not going to be uh, industrial, of course. But uh, for Michelin star restaurants, high-end hotels, or for example, research laboratories, we're interested in, in researching the, uh, you know, growing of certain exotic products in a small scale uh, that can actually fit into any kind of a research laboratory uh, where you can control or all the different environmental variables needed. This kind of a system is the optimal choice. Anyways, the industrial size saffron cultivation is where things really start to become interesting. And this is where Veles farming comes in. So located in Slovakia, Europe, Veles is an indoor vertical farming startup that blends automated indoor farming technologies with traditional saffron cultivation methods. Their goal is pretty simple, to produce the highest quality saffron year round for quality driven customers. While saffron has traditionally been grown in the field, being at the mercy of the weather, and of course more lately the effects of climate change, the advanced indoor growing technologies used by Veles ensures optimal conditions for the Crocus sativus flowers, maximizing the yield and the quality of their saffron stigma. This method allows them to produce saffron at an incredible efficiency and with an even quality. And if you didn't know, vertical farming is a method for growing plants in stacked layers with a goal of maximizing production per square unit of land used. Vertical farming is often done in controlled indoor environments, allowing the farmers to adjust the growing conditions for the plant to an optimal level. By incorporating hydroponics or water-based farming and smart technologies like sensors and automation, Veles Farming can ensure that their saffron plants receive the perfect amount of light, water and nutrients at the right time making their product one of the highest in quality around the world. So the innovative combination of traditional cultivation and indoor vertical farming allows Veles to maintain consistent quality and production levels, ensuring that they can meet the growing demand for this precious spice. Most importantly, by optimizing the quality of the product, Veles has been able to expand to extremely difficult markets of pharmaceuticals and cosmetics where high quality saffron is a priced product and where quality trumps everything. Okay, so why is this significant? Why should you care? Well, first, one of the biggest problems for the entire vertical farming industry has been the narrow selection of plants that companies have been able to grow. In fact, most indoor vertical farming firms have been and still are focusing their efforts on growing an assortment of salads, herbs and other leafy greens. While these products do already have an existing global market, the problem is that it is incredibly difficult, if not impossible, for vertical farming factories to ever become profitable when growing cheap produce like lettuce. On the other hand, Velas is one of the pioneers in the industry when it comes to growing high-cost exotic plants that allow the plant factory to pay itself back within two to three years compared to a more traditional five to eight year payback period. Having said this, it's not, of course, all fun and games. As mentioned before, saffron has traditionally been incredibly labor intensive to harvest and especially to process. While Veles has been able to make harvesting the flowers pretty easy due to the close environment and technology that they have implemented, the post-processing of saffron is still a huge issue. The problem is with the sorting on large scale, because mm. generally our calculation is for every one guy that picks the flowers, you need three guys that process the flowers. So for our <laughs> farm, for our farm currently, we need we run with around 80 people during harvest that you need to wow. so it's okay. like your small army and you need to delegate everybody. Mm. And so if you scale up, this issue has to be solved. So we are trying mm. to come up with a, with a way we call it the sorter. So basically mm -hmm. the aim of the sorter is that you just drop in the flower and it sorts mm -hmm. everything out to petals, the, the yellow, uh, the, the yellow part and the red stigma mm -hmm. basically. About and also the red stigma is already cut into the red and the yellow part. So basically then you just throw in the flower and everything comes in a way. This is where most of the, the labor connected to saffron is. So the sorting of the saffron. The harvesting is, is quite easy, it, it can be quite mm -hmm. fast. So relevant to this, Veles is actually working on automating the harvesting and post-processing stages using some kind of robotics or techno magic of some kind. Unfortunately, Veles couldn't really comment too much on the automation just yet. Our automation, I'm, I'm not going to pinpoint the exact intricacies of the of how it works because sure. uh, there is a, let's say, I would say now uh, a rush to create the first saffron sorter, I'll call it. Mm, okay. Basically, 
uh, I think this is where some of the saffron companies, they are focusing as well. The problem is not with the harvesting. The harvesting mm. of the plant is the easiest part of the job. The problem is with the sorting on large scale. So we are trying mm. to come up with a, with a way, we call it the sorter. So basically mm -hmm. the aim of the sorter is that you just drop in the flower and it sorts mm -hmm. everything out to petals, the, the yellow, uh, the, the yellow part and the red stigma mm -hmm. basically and also the red stigma is already cut into the red and the yellow part so basically then you just throw in the flower and everything comes in a way i'm not gonna go in how the machine works this is our, sure, our sure, yeah. the, the the secret sauce but this is where most of the the labor connected to saffron is so the sorting of the saffron all right so as Veles has shown indoor vertical farming can in fact be implemented in a financially sustainable way if Companies are smart about how they do business. First, as Victor mentioned during the interview, startups need to mind the high capital investments involved with setting up a farm. And Victor recommends that new indoor farming companies should start small and expand slowly as they gain traction. In addition, as the popularity of indoor vertical farming grows around the world, and while more and more countries are adopting this technology, companies entering this field need to start finding crops to grow that have an actual added value to the local or global markets. For example, when setting up, the team at Veles looked into a number of high value crops, analyzing the potential for each before landing on saffron. We started in Netherlands as a school project. We also started with uh, microgreens, simple leafy greens and herbs, which we sold to mm -hmm. restaurants there. This was, so we were brainstorming ideas of what other crops to grow. And we were like, OK, let's focus on crops with higher added value because we we just received the first investment. We went through wasabi, gentian, mm -hmm. cranberries, blueberries, vanilla, papaya. I don't know, we, we mushrooms. <laughs> we, we looked into everything to what yeah. we can grow. And, but then we stumbled out upon saffron and we met our also, also saffron advisor, Dr. Ardalan Givalizadeh. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I bugged the name. Uh, it's pretty hard. He's from Iran. And we met up and talked a bit about saffron and indoor production of saffron. And then we stumbled about saffron and we realized there is a way to leverage vertical farming to improve the overall production. So to make the mm -hmm. product higher quality. And of course, even if Veles is currently focusing on saffron, at least publicly, their publicly stated goal is to blend vertical farming with smart technologies to revolutionize high value crop production. So perhaps one day we will see Veles growing wasabi and all kinds of super exotic plants as well. All right, so growing saffron and other high value crops, clearly a billion dollar idea. However, you don't have to grow the red gold to make indoor farming work. For example, this New York based startup is making millions of dollars each year by growing luxury tier strawberries. Check it out. <laughs> 